Hi, this is Pat McDonald, your host for Vote for Vermont, where our tagline is listening beyond the sound bites. Today, um, I am joined by a very good friend, Jennifer Harrison, who is a uh, former mo uh, actress. I said model, but I'm sure you did that too. I did that too. <laughs> and uh, also radio talk show host in Waitsfield, and she's here to help me co-host. And our guest is Andrew Perchlick, who is uh, from Washington County and uh, lives in Montpelier. Andrew, welcome to the show. Thank you, Pat. Yeah, I'm glad, yeah. To, glad to have you here. Yeah. We haven't actually met. I've seen you at the State House. Well, two years ago we did the same show, but it was with seven candidates, so I was just oh, sorry. one of many. <laughs> but you won. Yeah, I got elected. So there yeah. you go. Yeah. So introduce yourself a little bit to our viewers. Yeah, so I'm Andrew Perchlick. I lived for 20-some years in Marshfield, where I was active in the local government there. I was on the volunteer fire department. I was the select board, select right. board chair. Uh, but then when my youngest daughter went to high school, it made a lot more sense for her and us, for her to go to Montpelier High School. And so we moved to Montpelier at that point. Right. And so the last just, whatever that's been, four years that we've been in, in Montpelier. Right. And then two years ago, I got elected to, to serve Washington County on the Senate. Right. So have a lot of connections in different parts of the county. You know a lot of people up in the Mad River Valley uh, and really have been focused on how we build our local communities even before I was a oh, senator. Just that was interested of mine of being involved in and how these are different organizations that help the local communities. Ah, great. We'll have to chat about some of it. We were involved with the Prevent Child Abuse Vermont, oh, Jennifer yeah. and I. Yeah. Uh, yeah we've been on the board, the and now we're, um, what is our title? I can't remember. But we're there to help <laughs> and run events and stuff. So um, We do a lot of events, a yeah. lot of fun yeah. events. We, yeah. we love the kids. Yeah, yeah. That executive they need director, I'm forgetting her name, but she's done a great Alinda job. Johnson. Alinda yeah. Johnson. Yeah. Yeah. What's sad is the, um, they had the numbers for a child abuse down, and then with the opioid crisis, and I don't even know now with people staying home, yeah. the um, neglect numbers went skyrocketing, uh, and there you are. Anyway, Jennifer? So the first question is... My very first question yes, yes. <laughs> is uh, what are the most important priorities that you are discussing with your voters and hope to pursue when you're in the legislature? Yeah. Well, unfortunately, I'm having a hard time speaking to many voters these days, so yeah. it's mostly kind of remote discussion. So it's good to have a, have a political discussion here with you today. Um, but my priorities, I mean, when I talk to them, it's usually they, they're contacting me because they have an issue or something like that. So that's... That's kind of what I, I like about being a senator, too, is being able to help people through, through their relationships with government, whether it be a problem they have with DMV or we had a lot of people that had trouble with unemployment. I commissioner of DMV. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I think Wanda Manoli is doing a, a good job. Yes, she is. Yeah, and, but you know, people just have some little issue and they don't know who to call, and I, I really encourage everybody to contact me. Yeah. If they just don't understand something, they don't know who to call, whether they voted for me or not, I really make myself accessible and want to be a watchdog a, for, a, on the government that they're mm -hmm. doing the right thing, they're not treating people unfairly or anything yeah. like that. So. They're still calling me. That's when they important. get somebody's name in their mind, and oh, yeah. I just, I help mm -hmm. them because, and I'm glad to hear you say that, you know, no matter, no matter who. Yeah, I think so, too. That's yeah. very important. Yeah. yeah. I and think so. all our legislators are very accessible. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so are, I always say this all the time, our congressional delegation, yeah. as much as I may or may not support them, their staff, mm -hmm. if you call on behalf of a constituent, they just go out of their way right. to help because it's a constituent. And I find that way with state, like if I call Wanda Manoli or yep. send her an email, I get a response right back. Yep. Or, Secretary Flynn, if it's a transportation thing, so, and that's hard for them to respond to every cons person in, right. in Vermont. Yeah, right, so, right. that's a, it's a it's a position of of authority and privilege to be able to have access to the secretary. So, I want to use that for the benefit of Good. the constituents. And so, given all that, what would you say um, you know, have been your accomplishments and things that you're most proud? Of, whether it's a bill you worked on or committee work, what uh, you should start with? What committees you're on? And, yeah, I'm on transportation yeah, and oh. education, and I've enjoyed those 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 committee assignments and. and <laughs> I thought it's been a great learning experience being with Chair Mazza, who's been there for oh, basically yeah. ever. Yeah. So it, he's been great uh, kind of teaching me the ropes and allowing me to pr pursue what I'm interested in, which is more like electric cars and kind of the transportation future. And he's really given me the, the space to, to investigate those and be a, a leader on the committee as we talk about how, 
how we're going to transform our infrastructure on transportation. How are we going to, one, get more electric cars? How are we going to reduce our use of fossil fuels, which is something that's a priority of mine? And, but at the same time, we rely on gasoline taxes for all our infrastructure. So how are we going to maintain our infrastructure while we're decreasing the use of gasoline? How do we do that with electric cars? So that's something that I've been interested in and been working on. Another thing I did on the committee as I worked on exempting older cars from the emissions law. Oh, love it, which, thank you. Which kind of yeah. made my environmental friends mad because they thought oh. older cars are more polluting, but they don't drive as much, they're on their way out. And the main problem that we are trying to solve is low-income folks just really have difficulty having cars. And oh, often yeah. their emission inspection was just because the light went on or it was a $400 part, and so for the lack of that, they would drive it unregistered, uninspected, then they'd get mm -hmm. a ticket, and they'd get the car taken away from them. I used oh, to get A&R mad at me because I say when the lights go on, I just use uh, yeah, the duct black tape. tape. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. those, what, what, a thousand yeah. ways to use the, whatever, duct tape? Yeah. I stick it over the lights, and I just right. keep driving. <laughs> and we changed the emissions, so it was more difficult for a friendly mechanic to say, like, well, I know it's just the light, so I'm gonna and pass it, but now they can't do yeah. that. And so it, it was really catching a lot of low-income folks yeah. with their older cars. I was always hoping if I could put it a plug that if they're still under warranty for the yeah. first couple of years, you don't need to go to, you know, you go to your dealership and they fix it under warranty. Why do we have to make these people spend all that money? Although it's certainly a good revenue for, right, for, for DMV. For yeah. DMV but. Right. And also there's a lot of people didn't know, like Subaru has 150,000 mile warranty on the emissions. But a lot of, if you go to your local mechanic, they might not know. Right. Mm -hmm. So we tried to educate folks to say, if your car's not 15 years, but under this mileage, you could still get it paid right. for. For free. Yeah, for free. So they just do some more education and stuff like that. In an education committee, one of my accomplishments was just this last year where I worked on a program for indoor air quality for schools. As we were thinking about, will schools open up with COVID, you know, the pandemic happening, there's a lot of concern about ventilation systems. Yeah. And we have unfortunately underspent on our infrastructure of our schools. We have a lot of deferred maintenance. So I worked with Efficiency Vermont on a program that's bringing six and a half million dollars. We've already have six and a half million dollars in scopes of work for schools in place. We're trying to get more money for that program mm -hmm. just to increase the air circulation, indoor air quality. Good. Cause no, that's really important. I, I want to see the schools to reopen, mm -hmm. but I want it to do it safely, and I think right. indoor air quality is key on that. And so when are the schools opening? Today. Oh, perfect. Today's first yeah. day of oh, school. Oh, excellent. We were going to go down to Gettysburg, and they just closed Gettysburg College because uh -huh. they had a huge outbreak, so yeah. we canceled our <laughs> uh, reservations at the campground. Yeah, uh, no, a lot of a lot of other like, colleges have had outbreaks, but we've yeah. been good in Vermont. I hope so. Yeah, we have been. My sister works for state government for the administration, and she sent me a map that had the only green state in yeah. the entire map, and that was from NP VPR, and it was Vermont. Yeah. That we are a green state, and I'm like, kudos to us. Yeah, no, we're definitely yeah. the lowest infection yeah. rate, and I think we're just doing a good job as far as keeping on top of it and, you know, having the masks uh, everywhere, and people, I think, are are good about it, yes. and, and we're Dr. Levine, I think, is doing a great job. He's and the governor, amazing. And, and we are doing a lot with the tracing. So as soon as there is some little outbreak, they're really on top of it so it doesn't spread and become community-wide. Great. great, good for you. Yeah, we had the guy who's uh, a commissioner of, oh my gosh, I forget his name. He's from the mapping guy and the tracing. He does uh. the tracing and mapping. He's a commissioner of um, um, finance and regulations. Or oh, Pichek. Oh, Pichek. Yeah. He was amazing. And he spoke in the... Not over my head. Yeah, yeah. I, I actually understood what he was talking about. <laughs> I, was, yeah. I was a little worried about that when he came on the show. I'm like, oh, great. But he was very people friendly. So yeah. it was good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's a good guy. Yeah. So I am wondering, in this time of seclusion, how have you been getting your platform out to people? Have you been doing a lot of Zoom calls and things um, like that? There's been some Zoom forums and things like that during the primary. There haven't been any of those so far for the general election. So it's really been email, social media. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, I don't know if people are using websites as, as much, but, you know, I've been thinking about that. I'm definitely open to suggestions from folks if, if they're feeling like they're disconnected to the folks that are candidates right. this time. Mm -hmm. what, what, I've talked to some candidates in Chittenden County that were going door to door. They were just knocking and then stepping six feet back. Yeah. And so I don't know if people would want that or if that would be would be 
weird. So I haven't really had a good opportunity to have that conversation mm -hmm. with folks other than um, some local Democratic, the, during the primary, the Valley Dems had some mm -hmm, things. Right. The Washington County Democrats are, are really active these year, these this year, and so they've had a couple of forums. Yeah, so a lot of people are doing meet and greets at a lawn somewhere where you can separate yourself. People yeah. can bring lawn chairs and and separate themselves. Yeah, I did do one yeah. of those up in up in Waitsfield. Good. Oh, that's nice. Oh, yeah. where in Waitsfield? With other candidates. It was up by the airport. Oh, Part of, yeah. I've never been that's up nice. in that, yeah. that yeah. area. That's like, really beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. nice. I like to go hear the candidates regardless of party just because I'd like to like to hear what they have to say because believe it or not, you may have some good ideas and maybe we right. should all work together. Well, yeah, There's well, a concept. Definitely also, like Instagram that. Live is really good. Yeah. Just saying. That's I did, really fun. I did get an Instagram account this <laughs> campaign, which I didn't have before. And, yeah. And yeah. so, yeah. Those, That's those, fun. And Facebook Live. Yeah. Yeah, and I haven't really done much live stuff, although yeah. I noticed a lot of other candidates doing that, and maybe that, you know, people watch those more. Mm -hmm. But Facebook definitely with posts and then people responding. Yeah. And then if it's a personal issue, they can DM me and say, you know, or just send me an email. Right. Mm -hmm. Good. And you respond yeah. ASAP. And I, I answer my phone. So <laughs> my phone oh. is, oh. If, when people call me, I answer. And often I get some people that call me and they're like, oh, are you Senator Perks? And I'm like, yeah. yeah. Like, oh, I didn't think you'd, you would be answering your phone, but I answered my That's phone and really talked to nice. folks. So yeah. if people that want makes to call me, me so mad when the, each website said contact, and then you have to put your name and address yeah. and write a message. I don't. I just say, nope, forget it. Yeah. If I can't call you or email you, sorry. Yeah, yeah and uh, other politicians have said, oh, I don't do that. But I have not. It hasn't been a problem. I don't get mm -hmm. that many calls. I don't get any, like, mean people or anything. Right. So... It's so far it's worked, and I think it's it's you need to be accessible in that, so, in that regard. Tell me I don't think um, we have mean oh, people sorry. in Vermont. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think we saw some one day though. Um, we were at the state house for the Blue Lives uh, Matter oh, yeah, sort of thing. That was interesting. I had to speak, and that was. Worked up. I oh, thank wow. the people that asked me. Um, yeah. Anyway, but because of COVID, um, we've heard a lot from the governor about revenues. I think we'll be okay this year, apparently, but next year is going to be a challenge. So. What are you looking at with regard to, you've got things like the pension, yeah. higher ed, which is just seems to be a disaster at the moment, and Lake Champlain, and a whole lot of uh, right. liability that uh, we cannot afford. Yeah, well, I, I wonder, when I saw the question, I wanted to clarify, I don't think the pensions is a crisis. I think the question was kind of about a, these different crises. I mean, it's a lot of money, but it was a, a problem by past legislatures and governors for not funding the pension, and I... I agree with Sec Treasurer Pierce, Pierce right. about let's we have a plan we're going to pay it off, and I think we should continue to do that because it will definitely benefit, you know, basically the next generation that that we do that we take responsibility for that. But yeah, on the Lake Champlain, it's a lot of money, and we're again just spending millions of dollars every year to correct a problem that took decades to oh, yeah. to get there. A lot of lot of um, people were responsible for that over the years. Yeah. So it wasn't a Democrat re Republican thing, no. it was everybody. Yeah. And it's from all these different sources. So it's hard just to say, okay, there's yeah. one thing we need to clean up. There's and it's millions and millions of dollars. Yeah. So it's not a thing that you can just do this one thing and then just even it's if actually, we had all the money. It's actually four point five billion. Yeah. Uh, who yeah. Knows? <laughs> right. <laughs> Hundreds of millions of dollars. Yeah, exactly. And and it's all these little infrastructure projects. It's all the stormwater projects. Right. It's all these farm projects. So you can't just do it one year anyway. Think, so with Lake Champlain, I think the EPA, if we don't get our act together, they're gonna come in and do it for us. And that, right. that's what they're threatening, and I, I'm worried about that. But I, right. uh, as much as I really like Beth Pierce, I think she's sharp as a, one of the better ones we've had. But on the pension, not so supportive because she lowered the ROI from 9 to 8, 8 point something. Uh -huh. And that's not enough. I think you have to lower it to reality, which is maybe 5. Oh, lower and base further, your plan yeah. And base your plan on that. Yeah. And that's where I differ from her because I, I wish I got eight. I wish I got five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's what yeah. that's what worries me about her plan. That she work will continue to underfund yeah. it. Yeah. I hope she's right, but yeah, I, like, I don't see it. And hopefully we can adjust over the over the time. Right. I mean, there was an earlier question that I didn't fully answer, which mm -hmm. was the priorities. I talked about a couple accomplishments, but I did kind of write down just so I, rem I remembered them because mm -hmm. there was a question about priorities. One of them was to be accessible, just be a good senator. That's definitely a priority. But as mm -hmm. far as policy things, um, I have down the about elevating justice and equality, increasing access to, to post high school. 
So not just college, but any kind of education post high school. We have a very good high school graduation rate, but a very poor. Tech ed. Yeah, tech ed. <laughs> I'm VTC. a fanatic about tech yeah, ed. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think there's a, there's a lot of different things that we could be doing there. Uh, I'm really a renewable energy. That's my background on the clean energy sector. And I think there's a lot we could do with mm -hmm. building our kind of renewable energy economy in the state mm -hmm. and saving Vermont money, but building the economy there, that's a priority of mine. And also childcare, having accessible, it's affordable yeah, so childcare yeah. for, for all businesses and for the families. Mm -hmm and also um, healthcare, it's, yeah, right. which is, is a huge problem, everybody agrees, and I'm not sure what to do about it, but I wanna keep the pressure on, and I'm, I'm supportive of the making primary care universal, mm -hmm. and you know, kind of like the, I don't know if you're familiar in Barry, the People's Clinic. Oh yeah, for sure. Where anybody oh, yes, can just sure. go in and get that. Could we do that on a statewide basis? Right. You know, the next question is how we pay for it. And I know some, some couples that went there when they first moved to Vermont because they were just struggling to get started now that they've, uh, they're have they in the hospital and they got coverage, but they, they couldn't say enough about people's yeah. health and wellness. It's a great place. It's a great place, great place. Yeah. It's a good concept. Yeah. Doctors come and volunteer there. It's wonderful. And they just take care of whoever walks in. So Isn't it's, that it's incredible? Great. That's great. the way it should be. Wouldn't yeah. that be nice? Yeah. 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 So the governor has said that the economy is not coming back as quickly as hoped. What do you see? What would you like to see happen? Yeah, no, I, I agree. And I th well, I think what I'd like to see happen is, is a federal government or a president that takes it seriously and is supportive of not spreading false information. So, uh, you know, there's a, I see a lot of problems in the federal government, but I think we in Vermont can do a lot to, to take care of it ourselves. It would be a lot better um, if we had a different president, a different administration, just around COVID. Because I think for our economy to really improve, we need to deal with COVID. It's going to be hard to open up and, and get our economy going as it was when, when the pandemic hit. We had a really good fiscal year last year. Right, we, we were going to have like record-breaking surpluses, which will help us this fiscal year. So right. really what people are saying is fiscal year 22 that's going right, to be the problem. The and hopefully we can open up in the, that kind of really vibrant economy we had when COVID hit will come back. Mm -hmm. And I think I agree with the way the governor's doing it, opening up slowly, making sure we're learning more about COVID, we're learning more about transmission, we're, we got the worst workforce on the tracing. So the hospitality industry is the next sector that right. the governor's talked right. about. Mm -hmm. Can we open that up, that which would bring in people from out of state as we prepare for the leaf peepers coming? How is the ski season, which is a big economic right, driver, right. going to work? So I'm hopeful that we can really continue to fight the coronavirus because mm -hmm. that's going to be key to opening up. But I think investing in in our local economies, what it be local food, local energy, mm -hmm. these things are going to be key for a, a strong COVID. I think response. what works against us is some of the the. Um ratings and rankings that you see out there, you know, we're high in, in taxes, we're high in regulations, we don't have enough uh, affordable housing. Yeah. When we were hiring for the state even, we would hire, I'm just not making sick of it, we'd hire the man and then the, the woman, they couldn't find a house to live and then the woman right. couldn't find a job, so they would turn us down. And it's, um, there's a lot of things that yeah. really need to be worked on to create right. an environment where people want to come here and I mean, obviously, we sell ourselves from a from a environmental perspective and a, a place of beauty, but right. you got to live. <laughs> yeah, and housing is yeah. definitely a key issue. Yeah. Senator Cummings talks about that. Like yeah. when she was selling real estate, she'd have two oh, for sure. high income people that couldn't afford a house in Montpelier. Yeah, serious. Think about that. Yeah, and then we have the homeless. We've done a couple of shows on homelessness, and that's just growing leaps and bounds. Yeah, no, it's. it's I don't <clears> even. <throat> I don't even know the answer to that. I yeah, and I'm, and it's interesting how it's changed. You yeah, know, the, uh, right. folks that have been around Barry Montpelier yeah. for a long time, it just it was never an issue. No, no, now. And all of a sudden, it's, yeah. a, it's a really big issue, which yeah. is interesting. To and, and when you get to know them, which I have a few times, they're awfully nice. Yeah. They're not what, you, what the stereotype is. They're very right. nice people who just got messed up, and right. there they are. Yeah, and it's, it's well, with a lot of problems, it's caused by our lack of funding for like mental health and yep, education exactly. and health care. Yep. So then people fall through the cracks yep. and, and get into trouble. So just more outreach to those folks to help them out, I think, is, is the yeah, answer. Ex I agree with you totally. But it's all new for the city, Yeah, for both cities. Okay, now this is very sensitive. 
Um, separate from Black Lives Matter and their concerns, what are your thoughts about the protests that have occurred in Montpelier and Burlington? Mm -hmm. And what would you like to see happen? And this is important to me. Yeah. What has to happen to bring people back together again? And that right. is, well, we don't have to talk about it, but I'm really, really, really passionate about this. Good. Bringing yeah. people back together again. Yeah. I get emotional. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think what needs to happen is we need to have some action so people feel like there's actually some change yes. happening. Yeah. So yes. what, what I've heard even from senators that have been there a long time that have been working on this issue, they pass things, but then it, nothing really happens. Mm -hmm. One example is all the reporting on police pullovers and pulling people over. We mm -hmm. said you have to report your d data on race, yes. but they just were refusing to do it. Mm -hmm. And there was no consequences. And there's things like that where I totally understand why people are frustrated. And I, uh, there's that MLA, yes. MLK quote about protest is the voice of the unheard. They don't really have another option. And they've been saying we need to make improvements for decades or if not hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. And we just haven't done it. So uh, I'm in agreement with I can see why they're protesting. And for that to end you need to actually have some action to say mm -hmm. like, this is what the change is. This is how we're gonna do things differently. So mm -hmm. they feel it's just not empty words. Cause I think so long they've just heard, we agree with you, we, mm -hmm. we, we're gonna do better. Mm -hmm. And we're not racists. And so therefore you just need to trust us and things will get better, but they haven't got better. In mm -hmm. fact, they've gotten worse, I think recently. So we need to really have some concrete actions to show that. Mm -hmm. Those I do have, I have one little question uh, off the, yeah. the record, but do you think that Vermont should defund the police and or just get rid of, abolish the police? Yeah, altogether? well, I think it's important that you don't really hear, at least I haven't heard people say abolish the police. They mm -hmm. say defund the police. And I can see why they're saying that because they're saying, let's reform the police, let's train the police, let's mm -hmm. do in, in bias training. And that hasn't worked. Mm -hmm. And so saying defund the peace is, police is saying that's the... You're, if you're a police or care about the police, then you need funding. And that's maybe going to get people's attention mm -hmm. if we start cutting the budget. Then people pay attention. When you say, like, well, we're going to make you report or we're going to make you do training or we're going to, you know, require you to hire more uh, police officers of color, that's just around the edges. But if we say we're going to actually affect your budget, like whether you're the DMV commissioner or the head of the police, Fund, defunding your budget is a serious issue and mm -hmm. you want to you will actually engage more than I think otherwise so I think that's why it's a, a good tactic mm -hmm. and I think they're not saying abolish the police even though if you defunded them 100% they wouldn't be there it's it's kind of restructuring them and do do police need to approach every interaction with the public whether they're a person of color or not as, as somebody that could that an arrest could happen mm -hmm. so like it seems like every traffic stop could be a, a life and death situation mm -hmm. for some folks. Like maybe the police, yeah. it's a different approach. Like it, you don't hear about people shooting people that are giving parking tickets because they're mm -hmm. not carrying guns and, and potentially arresting some folks. So maybe yeah. part of it's just what are we asking, to do police, uh, asking the police to do? Mm -hmm. If you look at the police logs in the Times Argus or the bridge, People call the police for everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Squirrels, loud neighbors. <laughs> yeah, like, we really require them to do too much. Right. And because of, like we talked earlier, not funding health care, mental health, you get homeless people, you get other issues. They're dealing with all of society's problems. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like an issue with schools where all the social problems we have often are dealt with the schools. So people yeah. are concerned about school budgets increasing. But, well, we're also asking the skilled schools to deal with all these kids mm -hmm. that are having problems and the opioid epidemic is being solved in the schools. And then it's that same with the police. Why are the police having to deal with uh, so much substance abuse problems? So yeah. I think defunding it is really refunding it. It's like, well, maybe the police, the folks with guns and they're arresting the bad mm -hmm. people, that maybe they don't also have to do all these other things that mm -hmm. causes this friction mm -hmm. with these communities. That, so. We had I, a, a, Tony Fakos is a, is a really good friend of my, mine and my husband. My husband's a retired captain of the state police. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. And um, I sort of disagree with some of the things, yeah. but we don't have the time to get into it. But he worked a lot on this thing called Team Two, which, which when you would go to a home situation, you would bring along with you a mental oh, health right, expert yeah. and uh, others that, that, were, that were trained separately, trained together. Right. And so when they got to the site where there was a, a mentally uh, challenged person, 
they seem to know what to right. do, and so it would end peacefully. Right, and, um, and the police can trust that person because exactly, they work with them they on a daily with them. basis. Exactly, because they work with them. And Anthony started, and I've talked to the new chief of police, and I think he's going to follow in the same vein, yeah. um, that get, get the training done. Right. There are local officers who really do a good yeah. training. And in the state police, if somebody makes a mistake, they should be required to go back to training mm -hmm. and, and maybe do it twice. And if at the, the second time, Goodbye. And more training. But you've yes. got some union issues, and I love unions. Don't mm -hmm. don't yell at me, but <laughs> I do. But the union should yeah. recognize that maybe this person doesn't belong in that job, and maybe be reassigned somewhere so he has a right. job. But yeah, and I agree with people that we maybe they need more training. Yeah, exactly. Like more, yeah. and maybe invest in them because I know it's hard to get people to want to be on the police force. Right. We, mm -hmm. it's a, always a, a recruitment is right. a difficulty. But maybe we're saying we'll invest in you. You'll go through the basic training, but right. also will help you get your college degree mm -hmm. and right. those kind of things. Um, I, I think um, the state police, I, I don't think they spend enough hours on specific issues. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what they have to look at is just because you've spent a class for eight hours doesn't mean you've got the, it's sunk right. in your head. And, and they have a problem recruiting because um, of any drug issues when you were in high school, right. you don't qualify. And I, I don't know whether Maybe I'm stepping out here and I'm going to kill, but maybe they should revisit that because right. there are some. Well, especially good with cannabis, which is now legal, like right. that shouldn't. I mean, at some point, you may be missing uh, really good candidates because of something stupid they did in high school. Right. Join the crowd, you know? It's like right. yeah. there, but there, but by the grace of God. Well, I do have yeah. something else to say. Yeah, we have is about that okay? one and a half minutes. So oh my gosh. Sorry. Okay. This is my other question. It was just about the police, real fast. I just think that, in my opinion, I think it would be nice if we had police officers go into schools and teach them at a very young age how to behave when pulled over by the police. Because mm. my friend is a police officer, and I remember when he got his little suit on, I know I have one more mm. minute, and he, he walked in and I said, well, what do I do? Because I always get nervous and my hands sweat when yeah. I get pulled over. And he always tells me just to be polite, right. be respectful, yes sir, no sir. Right. And just not to cause... Uh, Keep your hands right. in sight. Yes, and all of that. So say. I know I have another question. Yeah. Sorry, but I just think it would be good if kids just would learn that. Um, why do you think you are the best candidate for the position and why should voters return you to the state house? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I look at it a little differently. I wouldn't say that I'm the best candidate. It's not my job to like rank myself amongst the other candidates. I'm I'm a candidate that that that's trying hard, and I will work hard for the for the constituents. And I definitely will vote a certain way, and mm -hmm. I definitely have different priorities. So the best candidate for me is probably going to be different than the best candidate for Pat. And I understand that. I'm not trying to say I'm the, the just the best. You know, <laughs> I'm. I avoid the, those kind of grandiose statements, you know, counter to the kind of oh, go ahead. Our current president. Oh, everybody <laughs> is like this. They That's don't, right. you know. So, but gotta, I think, you know, if you care about renewable energy, if you care about daycare, if you care about education, if you care about, you know, trying to figure out how we're going to get universal primary care, mm -hmm. then I would be, you know, definitely a good candidate and somebody that I think you would want to have in the Senate representing Washington County. And I've also worked hard to make it that I'm representing all 18 towns and the two cities of the county. And so if you're from Cabot or Roxbury or Northfield and feel like it's all Montpelier-centric, I think I'm also a good candidate that I'm really working to, to reach out to folks up in Warren and in the different corners of the county. Yeah, it's good. It's hard to get out there, though. That's yeah. great. So and you thank you for phone. being on the show. Jo um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Well, thank you for hosting, Thank Jennifer. you so much. Yes. That was Listen, really thank fun. Thank you for listening in. We'll see you next week. And in the meantime, keep listening beyond the sound bites.